mysteriously, some of Europe's most ancient modern humans are distantly related to Native Americans. DNA sequencing shows some of these individuals share family ties with surprising populations, and they all boast plenty of Neanderthal and Anisova relatives. 45,000 years ago, some of the first modern humans to call Europe home, lived in and around Bulgaria's Barcho Kiro cave. They created adornments, like beads and pendants of cave bear teeth. They fashioned stone and bone tools and colored them with red ochre. They hunted, butchered, and feasted on local animals. Artifacts of this lifestyle were left scattered in the cave, but these ancient humans left little evidence of themselves. Just a single tooth and a few tiny bits of bone survived to the present day. Yet those fragments contained enough genetic material that scientists have now recreated some of the human stories, revealing surprising information about both their ancestors and their descendants. Two genetic studies, published in different journals, have sketched out the family trees of Europe's earliest known modern humans. Three 45,000-year-old individuals from Barcho Kiro Cave and one similarly aged skull, from a site in Czechia, known as Golden Horse. Only the Barcho Kiro individuals have living descendants, and they are found in very surprising places, in East Asia and the Americas. The ancient humans, from both ancient European sites, do share one common ancestral strain, a healthy dose of Neanderthal DNA. Among the Barcho Kiro humans, evidence seems to show that when modern humans moved into Europe, they commingled with Neanderthals longer, and later, than is commonly believed. Several years ago, scientists working in the Bulgarian cave found human fossils, along with thousands of bones from butchered animals, and an assemblage of Paleolithic artifacts. A single molar stood out as unmistakably modern human, but the rest of the bones were broken bits that had to be identified as modern human by using protein mass spectrometry, which can spot uniquely human protein sequences, not found in bones of other species. The human bones were then radiocarbon dated to between 42,580 and 45,930 years before present. Researchers also produced tiny bits of tooth and bone powder, from which they could extract DNA, and sequence the genomes of three different individuals who once called the cave home. While their age suggests these individuals were among the earliest modern humans to live in Europe, their DNA reveals that they have little relation to the people now known as European. A curious pattern we see is that modern humans arrive in Siberia, where Neanderthals didn't live as far as we know, many thousands of years before they arrive in Europe or any of the Neanderthal lands, such as the Altai Mountains. That suggests our ancestors could move more rapidly, when avoiding a direct confrontation with Neanderthals, using technology to exploit habitats that Neanderthals didn't. Presumably, modern humans had technology, such as fur clothing, warm shelters, and hunting technology, that allowed them to occupy colder regions Neanderthals couldn't live in. They may then have expanded back around into Neanderthal lands, before these explorers went east and discovered the Americas. Interestingly, these earliest Europeans that we find in the Barcho Kiro cave, did not contribute genetically to later Europeans. These groups were largely replaced by subsequent migrations of people. But they are closely related to the human groups that gave rise to later East Eurasians and Native Americans. It's really remarkable that fossils of three individuals in Bulgaria left behind DNA, and can trace their descendants to different parts of the world than we'd expect. Including, ancient and living East Asians and native peoples of the Americas. The genome study also shows that a thick branch on the Barcho Kiro family tree belongs to the Neanderthals. The individuals carry 3 to 3.8% Neanderthal DNA in their genes, which suggests more than a one-off love affair, far back in their family history. In fact, the genomes show that these European humans had Neanderthal ancestors just six or fewer generations back. Indeed, the Barcho Kiro cave individuals provide further evidence that the admixture with Neanderthals must have been common when they had a chance to meet, since all of them had Neanderthal ancestors very recently in their family histories. A second study tackled the intriguing skull of a single modern human female from the Czechia site that was found in the early 1950s and has confounded some researchers during the year since. Any context of exactly where in the cave it was buried, or with which artifacts it was found are long lost. Radiocarbon dating has failed, due to contamination. 
In fact, the analysis turned up cattle DNA, the result of animal glue once used to help preserve the skull, so the skull's true age is unknown. The DNA was well preserved in the skull, and genetic sequencing studies have revealed some interesting things about this mysterious woman. This individual shows substantial Neanderthal ancestry of 3%, and the segments of Neanderthal genome are exceptionally long. This is a good indication that she had very recent admixture with Neanderthals. Unlike with the individuals at Barcho Kiro, DNA analysis hasn't been able to shed much light on what happened to this group of humans, who lived in ancient Czechia. It looks like its own little branch of the populations, that trace their ancestry to those people who left Africa 50,000 to 60,000 years ago. Scientists cannot detect any directly descended populations, among people who are living. But why did these ancient European settlers not leave their genetic mark? Genetic studies suggest that the Europe of this era was the scene of a complex set of early migrations in which unrelated, distinct groups of early humans split off from common ancestors who left Africa. They settled across Europe, and encountered the Neanderthals already living there. Many of these modern human stories seem to have hit evolutionary dead ends. This individual doesn't seem to contribute to later human groups, nor do others of the handful of examples sequenced so far, including a 45,000-year-old specimen from Siberia, and a 40,000-year-old skeleton from Romania. Not all fossil humans represent ancestors of living populations, or populations that left genetic descendants. That may be more the rule than the exception, and the genomics is highlighting that. Interbreeding between humans and Neanderthals may not have been all that exceptional, during the tens of thousand years that the two species coexisted in Europe. These new studies point to multiple pulses of Homo sapiens dispersals across Eurasia, perhaps with different archaeological signatures, and multiple interbreeding events with the Neanderthals. It's not known exactly where, when, or how often our early human ancestors commingled with Neanderthals. Often, the interbreeding wasn't successful for Neanderthals, most of their genetic variants didn't stay around. But early modern human populations could have acted like sponges, absorbing pockets of Neanderthals, through limited interbreeding in places like Eastern Europe. Perhaps that helped to cause the demise of Neanderthals as a viable population, but they didn't completely disappear. Another analysis showed that Neanderthals were much more closely related to Denisova than to Homo sapiens, and that they both managed to contribute genes to modern populations in island Southeast Asia and Australia. The DNA sequence also shows that Native Americans and people from East Asia have more Denisova DNA, on average, than Europeans. Archaeologists have long thought that the largest population of Neanderthals lived in Europe, so the finding complicates the picture of the way modern people and Neanderthals are related. Either there was a separate event, in which Neanderthals interbred with people in Asia, or the genetic contribution of Neanderthals in Europe was diluted by later migrations. This picture is very incomplete given that the archaeological record is also very incomplete. There's furthermore a lot of ambiguity in interpretation. For example, just exactly what does it mean to call a skull anatomically modern human, and can we really tell when modern humans arrived someplace, based on stone flakes and points? The fascinating part of this, aside from the fact that Native American people carry both Denisova and Neanderthal DNA, and that they carry more than Europeans, is that the Denisova and Neanderthal DNA that they carry is different from that of Europeans. This difference in the Neanderthal and Denisova DNA haplotypes might be able to help solve a long-standing mystery. The mystery is whether part of the native population of the eastern seaboard of the United States, and in particular, the far northeastern part of that region, was populated by Europeans long before the time of Columbus. The most plausible explanation to this mystery though, seems to be that the DNA haplotype came from an archaic human. Most likely a Neanderthal or Denisova or their mysterious Asian relatives. Indeed, the haplotype shows up in the skeleton of a Neanderthal Denisova hybrid found in a cave in the Altai Mountains of Siberia. And so, it seems that the Native American people today inherited certain genes from their ancient Neanderthal ancestors, who lived in the Altai Mountains of Siberia. It also appears that these genes did not carry forward to Europe, if indeed this group of Neanderthals was ancestral to Europeans at all.